There's got to be a point in all of our lives when something happens and we become a seeker. Welcome to another great episode of Seekers of the Eternal. We are your hosts, Jason DeRosha and Chris Parks. Chris, how are you, brother? Hey, I'm doing great. We're back again another week. Back again, back at it. Mm -hmm. How was your week, Chris? It's been a good week. Been uh, uh, had some friends in town over the weekend in from New York, so did a little bit of yeah, just hanging out with some friends and and catching up that way. And then uh, today is what Tuesday, so yeah, yesterday um, getting into some more drawing with the the um, the Hanuman artwork that I'm getting close to finishing, and then um, had a great interview with a magazine called awakening times so we're going to be doing a, i'm going to be working on the cover art and a feature in that magazine Very so cool. i'll get some good more details to share on that as it comes together Very cool. yeah mm -hmm. we um yeah i kind of had a quiet week myself quiet but busy i'm uh, ready to launch a brand new children's book um called underwear is fun to wear and uh, mm -hmm. i just got the proofs back for that and um, so I'm just going to print right now and I should hopefully have the hard copies in hand by Friday and cool. then spend some time with my, thank you. Thank you. And then spend some time with my kids on the weekend. We took them actually, we had a big snowfall here, big, we had a decent snowfall here on Sunday in Toronto. And, um, we had a plan to go to the zoo and, you know, when you get time to just spend quietly with the family outdoors, it's always nice. And I was a little bit nervous. I'm like, ah, snow cold walking throughout the zoo it's probably not going to be a great day and i was completely wrong it was one of the best experiences i've ever had at the zoo because all of the animals come out when it snows just because mm. they want to frolic and play oh so amazing it's got a chance to mix it up with the polar bears and the rhinos and the giraffes and you know i'm not a i'm not a you know a huge fan of you know taking animals out of their out of their natural habitat and put them in the zoo. But I do know that the zoos usually, um, especially here in Canada, have animals who were, were you know, uh, not able to survive on their own or born into captivity. And so they're raised there and, um, you know, they do their best to take care of those animals. So, you know, my kids get a chance to experience, you know, seeing some animals that they would have never seen otherwise. And it was kind of cool just to see them frolic and play in the snow and mix it up with the kids. We had a great video of a polar bear coming right up to the glass and looking at the kids. I guess <laughs> they look delicious. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was just a really good time to spend with my family. That's cool. Yeah. I've never seen a zoo in the snow. So that, that's, yeah. a, that's a good one. Who would have, who would have thought that would be the, the best time to go? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, I'm really excited about today's podcast. I'm always excited about podcasts, but, um, you know, we we wanted to touch on um, a couple of the experiences that we had and the people that we met in uh, our trip to Miami. And, um, you know, Chris, if you want to maybe just share a little bit about what your takeaway was from an interview that I had with uh, one of the most interesting people we met in Miami named Stark. Um, what was your takeaway from that interview and, and why did you want to do this podcast in particular today? Yeah, I was going through the interviews that you did in Miami. We have those all on our, we'll, we'll put a link in the show notes here to the Soap Media, the Seekers Media channel, where we have all these great interviews. So it's so nice if you can't get to the summits or these conferences, but you want to see the people who are building in the space during this time in our history. Uh, that's what we do. And, uh, you know, Jay's great at, at asking great questions and Brandon's so great at hunting everybody down and getting them to come over and get these interviews. We're always like, I can't believe they're coming to do this, you know, <laughs> it's, and, and, but everybody is so willing to share in this time because we're all, we all respect each other in this, this kind of realm of, of this uh, really interesting space and this time in history to be creating and sharing. So yeah, I was watching one of the interviews and I was just like, wow, this one, <laughs> it, he has, he dropped so many gems in this interview that I'd love to expand on. So as I was thinking about what to share this week, that kept coming back to me and um, that this is one that we should pull apart and and um, expand on for the listeners and then also encourage everybody just to go listen to that interview. It yeah. brought me a lot of comfort and hope and, and excitement for the future. I mean, all this stuff is doing that. But when you have somebody who's so great at articulating 
these concepts. He's a poet in the way that he oh, speaks. He is. You can tell. <laughs> yeah, he's he's phenomenal, like master of words and uh, passionate and genuine. You know, I don't feel like he says anything because he's trying to impress anybody. I think he believes everything that he says. He's extremely well read, and um, you know, he's trying to educate and uplift. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a lot, oftentimes, you know, somebody who's that articulate and that, you know, uh, good at um, uh, talking about these things and, and selling ideas, you get a sense of, okay, they're, they're a polished salesman, they, they're really <laughs> good at this, they're, they're, they're tricking me in some way or whatever it is. I didn't get that feeling um, with this interview. It was no pretension. Um, it was saying all the things that I think a lot of a lot of artists so artists who are listening to this now um, I sent it to a few artist friends of mine that are just you know slightly interested in these new technologies and mm. like listen to this this is this is all the things I've been trying to articulate yeah. um, so um, I wrote down a few of the the points that Stark made in the interview and the first one here this was this was this was a great one. So he, I'll just I'll just read this here. He said, "The only thing the only thing limiting your growth in Web three is your imagination." Oh, I love that. The tools and resources are being created for artists to own their own careers in profoundly different ways, and they will be able to tell the stories that they are meant to tell. Um, Many artists are caught up trying to make for galleries, make for audiences, to make for collectors, and to make for algorithms. So, yeah, that's that's what's that's what's happening. You know, we're we're having to force what we're doing into making something that will be palatable for certain types of audience that we think we're creating for, or certain algorithms that we're creating for, or galleries that one it's like oh this is selling really well why don't you keep making more of this and you're like well that's not telling my story so you, a lot of times whether we like it or not we're getting stuck and trapped into making work that is outside of the real story that we're trying to tell with the work or the messages that we're trying to convey so i love that idea is that the only thing limiting your growth in web3 is your imagination Mm -hmm. I love that, that one bar, I think, um, you know, it, it, in web three in particular, like he, you know, and he goes on to talk about, you know, we'll probably get into this. I'm sure you wrote this one down as well, but you know, everyone has different strengths and in web three, you don't have to worry about it if you have any gaps, cause there's always somebody else there to fill in, you know, to backfill for the gaps that you may have. And, mm -hmm. you know, you really are part of a great community and, when you get to this community, you start to realize that there's a whole bunch of folks that have the skills that you seek, and they are probably the most supporting um, individuals on the planet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and making that making that the focus is is it is it is up to your imagination, and it is a, it's, so things aren't you know things aren't changing for artists. You know, it's not um, you you always want to be doing that. You mm -hmm. always want to be putting out the best work that is coming from your heart, that is not trying to um, play to sales or uh, collectors or galleries. And that's where the real genius comes through. And yeah, and being able to gather with a like-minded team, like what we're doing here now, this, this is something that I've always dreamed about is having, having a team where we all have this goal in mind and, and the goal is to really just create something beautiful and, and meaningful for people and to use the business strategies use all of those different things use the way that we're articulating it and sharing it and and, and getting it out to different audiences but right. allowing the art to be the thing that we're pushing not yes. changing the art or making it into a commercial thing so that it'll sell it's like no that the art's already there how do we expand that and get it to a wider audience and yeah. expand the possibilities of what could even be done. So I love that. It's really um, exciting to think about. Uh, the next one here that I wrote down, he said, it's the bill. Uh, it's the role of the builders to show, articulate, and author new paths for creative people to thrive and to tell the stories and to wake us all up in many ways. You know, like 
And that's that's something actually I I, I had a little Instagram um, video that I posted about the role of an artist is to wake people up that yeah. people walk around their lives sleepwalking, just getting into habitual thought patterns, getting into a habitual pattern of life. And you don't even, you know, you don't remember what you ate for breakfast. You don't know, remember the drive to work. You don't remember the, in, the conversations that you had and you go home and you do it all over again. Yeah. And this world of, of creativity and, and art and music and all of these things is, is to help snap us out of our, our sleepwalk for a little while and yeah. facilitating artists to be able to do that in bigger and bigger ways that are more in harmony with their uh, true purpose. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful thing to, to talk about and to be um, helping to, to work with and create during this time. 100 percent, yeah i think you know um the fact that I mean, everyone's a storyteller like in every every creation tells a great story or you can take someone on a journey with you and you know um we get lulled into it sometimes you know like sometimes we have these conversations or someone talks about you know art and creativity and, and it allows you to you know to wake up for just a moment and then you get right back into those habits and you kind of forget um so when you do get somebody on a journey with you and they are paying attention and they are, they realize they're alive in that moment. How much more powerful is it um, to take them on that journey and to tell a story? Uh, Cause you only have their attention before, before they go back into the mundane. Um, mm-hmm. And you know, that's not, not, there's not judgment on anybody. It's that life is hard and there's lots of responsibility and obligations that you have. And, you know, people have to focus on those things, but we are all, when we like came into this world, we all came in here creative and curious and, and full of energy and, and optimism. And, um, it's, it's really important to awaken that spirit. And then when that spirit is awake to feed it. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that. When you, when you find some artwork or you find a piece of music or or a book that you really love, then you want to like, okay, what else has this artist done? What else can I get into? Do they have a podcast? Do they have this or that? Um, you want to be more in their presence for a longer time because that thing really clicked with you. So it's like, I feel like I can learn a lot from what's channeling through this person and these platforms. It's going to make it so much more possible for artists to, here's my world, jump in with me, you know? Uh, let's all if you if you like this vibration if you like the other it, and also too a lot a lot of times it has to do with other people who like it the sort of audience that's attracted to a type of work or a genre of music and yeah. you're like wow oh, these are my people like we that's have right. similar mindsets we have similar ethos and things yeah. that we're going after and things that we appreciate in life and the way that we like to talk to each other and the way that we like to yeah. joke and, and I feel like that's kind of what we've been experiencing i mean personally that's what i've experienced through seekers of the eternal right um coming i have two kids i have personal responsibilities i'm married um seekers of the eternal gives me the outlet and i get a chance to be a part of a great community um i get a chance to connect with a great artist like you and 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 then be a part of the journey of your creative process you know what and it's not necessarily even you know specific to the the digital art that's being created through Seekers of the Eternal. You know, we had a chance to see how your art, your, your artistry is used in real world with the, you know, the, the, the galleries that you've been a part of or the mural that you just did in, uh, in Wynwood uh, in Miami. Um, you know, the behind the scenes, the creative process that's gone on behind the scenes, going back and looking some at some of your uh, commercial work that you did, um, you know, prior to pursuing sacred art, like, there's a whole journey and a whole story um, that we get to immerse ourselves in. And, you know, I can always jump in and out like for my, you know, when I got to focus on what I have to focus on in my, in my life, I do, but this break, I I get a chance to enjoy this journey with a whole bunch of cool people in the community that, you know, uplift me and, and teach me and, and make me laugh and all of those things. And, you know, I got to be a part of something really special. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And that means a lot to me. 
I think everybody as a, as a creator, we we want to be able to offer things like that for people. We want to be able to give those, uh, uh, create things that are bringing joy to people's lives by being able to tune into, you know, what we're doing creatively uh, to be able to follow along with some of the fun projects. Yeah. And then it also reminds us that these are really fun, you know, like when you're painting a mural and you're going day after day and it's a marathon and maybe it's hot out and you're dealing, it's like, it's like, no, remember, this is like the thing that you want to do. You worked really hard to get to here and you love doing this. So when there's other people that are interested in watching it and being there along for the ride with you, it makes all of those difficulties and things. It's like, yeah, it's interesting because it's hard. (laughs) you know that's that's why people want to tune into it because it's like for me to get to a place where I'm doing that I don't even I don't know if it's happening in this lifetime or that's just not my path I'm not never going to be doing that you know I like to watch my wife and I before going to sleep we watch YouTube videos on stuff we would never do you know (laughs) it's like I would never do that but I I love that you're doing that and that's pretty cool I'm never building my own you know DIY submarine (laughs) whatever it is Uh, but it's super cool that you're doing that so everybody seems like whatever um, uh, interest that you have you can have uh, we'll all have our little worlds that we can dive into i think it expands our web 2 social media into a web 3 it's like okay you know jason derocha you know here's here's my world you want to yeah. dive in and see what see what i'm up to and all these different things that, that's right who knows where it's going to go it but it's really it's really exciting to think about all of the the ways and hearing about how um this project particularly it's great to know that people are behind the scenes building things like this and thinking about the future and thinking about the new renaissance of art in in this time period because we're we're due for it and this is a when technology and art and people with high intentions and high frequency vibrations and spiritual connection come together then that ushers in the golden age you know so that's what we're we're all uh, aiming at is moving forward onward and upward uh i I just um i thought maybe we can just i can share a little bit about you know stark since we're going to be quoting him quite often and talking a little bit about his insights i can share a little bit about stark if if just to set the stage a little bit Mm -hmm. um so uh, stark is his last name michael stark he's an entrepreneur investor and community leader uh he's the founder and ceo of stark minds and michael champions the creative people i creative people, ideas, and organizations with the potential to achieve outsized impact on our global shared global future. Through its innovative agency framework, Stark Minds acts as a catalyst drawing in resources for talented artists, executives, and organizations that it represents. Additionally, Stark Minds excels at designing Web3 strategies, guiding clients through process of understanding and application, translating the vision of artists and brands into this new commercial and cultural landscape. Uh, landscape. Um, his bio is extensive. And, and so what I'll do is I'll put the rest up um, so that everyone has a chance to, um, to read it and connect with Stark, follow him in his podcast uh, and on his journey. Um, you know, what he's doing with the Medici family in Florence is just absolutely incredible. That itself is a journey um, that is of, of great interest. And uh, yeah, we had the chance to not only interview him in Miami, but um, I've had a chance to see him and spend some time with him at the uh, World of Women Gala following the interview. And then when I got back to Toronto, uh, I jumped on a Zoom call and chatted with him for a couple of hours almost. And, you know, he's a family man. He's got two little kids um you know he's got all the same kinds of concerns and and distractions as as the everyday person but he really does dedicate his life to you know creating an opportunity for people who are you know creatives and artists to come together and leverage you know this new technology and this new space um and to to build community in every in every sense of the word mm mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And for somebody who, who's this articulate and this dialed into, you know, the, the, the business end of it, the, the marketing side of it, but then also to have this spiritual connection and understanding and this real sense of knowing that we're only limited by our imagination, that yeah. it really is that that's the most exciting thing that I really I've learned in my life. <laughs> the, the discovery of that your imagination 
is literally creating the reality around you. That yeah. This is what separates us from the animals. We have imaginations as humans. And with our imaginations, it begins as a thought. The thought becomes words. The words become reality. Mm. And we start to, the, the, the way that we feel on the inside is, is reflected in the outside world around us. So surrounding yourself with high thinking, um, you know, motivated uh, people who are persevering and who have a lot of passion and, and love and open hearts, like you said, and open minds, then that, that imagination that you're developing and cultivating, you begin to see it t- take life in the world around you. So yeah. That's this combination of the, this is this is what I've been waiting for is like th- these these combination of spirituality meets commerce meets technology mm. and we can all just do and shape the world in in really profound ways to be able to do more and more of what we want to do in life and to be able to pursue the things that bring us lasting happiness and yeah. contentment and connections with other humans. So that's that's what this is all about. So I'll read another one of uh, his quotes here from the interview. So his his advice um, for for artists currently, um, he says, not to focus on the technology. Focus on what you're trying to say, the story, the messages that you're trying to connect. What this does is to help artists connect with their patrons and really begin to co-create in new ways that people didn't even think were possible just five years ago. Tools are being developed that will allow all of your output to create residuals and cash flows in new ways, offering the ability to be creating for collectors who, and this is, I think this is the, the key here, creating for collectors who buy into the mission as opposed to the trading side of it. Mm. Mm-hmm. They love what you're doing. They love your mission. And then they get to buy into that. So it's yeah. like, yeah, you create, you keep creating. We love the mission. You know, like, I don't know, you're, 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 you're an artist in a, that's working with a gallery and you're making paintings and they want you to just to keep making the paintings that are going to sell. It's like, mm. okay, that's an easy win. Or in the street art world, it's so much easier to sell a big wall to a, a property owner where it's decoration, where they would much rather mm-hmm. have a decoration, a Christmas paper wrapper around the building, rather than something of true art that makes right. you think and is actually, you know, is, is a, that artist's um, heart is is being is coming through and you're seeing something that is a, a breathtaking um, concept and beauty. No, we'd just rather have some patterns or, you know, just some color on the building. That's what we want safe. You know, I noticed that here in St. Pete, my wife and I have been curating a mural festival for the last eight years. Mm -hmm. And the, my wife is an incredible curator. She's so good at putting together artists, um, having different voices and different styles and combining them, putting them in the right place, putting them on the right buildings with the right building owners and all of that. And it's created this downtown uh, St. Petersburg area as just, you can just walk around and enjoy the place because it's just mm. full of amazing art. And you can just tell like a lot of effort went into and the, um, the artists that come in have painted all over the world are just like this, the collection that you have here, like rivals, you know, anywhere. Wow. Um, and it's brought a lot of growth to say Pete, you know, a lot of people come here on vacation and see the, all the restaurants and things that are opening up and all this, all this new energy and activity that's based on the art. And then they come in and, and then it's like, no, well, we don't we don't want that thing where, you know, you, you fly in an artist and we don't get to say who goes on the wall. We don't get to art direct what it is. You know, and we just we need it to be real safe and we need it to, to everybody in the building. If it's a if it's a commercial building, everybody needs to sign off on it. Mm. It's like you moved here because you like the energy of the space. And now you want to come in and say, like, no, it can't be that way. It has right. to be safe. Like if it was safe, this, there wouldn't be no there would be no scene here in the first place. So That's you're right. trying to you don't know what you're doing. You, you know, you can't trust you don't trust the, the artists. You don't trust the curators. So 
And this way, I, coming back around to that idea is like, if the artist gets to do exactly what they want to do, and you've got uh, patrons who love what they're doing, and also you, he says here too, there's another quote about co-creating with your patrons it, yeah. it becomes more of like we're not like catering to the lowest common denominator but now we're sort of in this together which is more exciting it's like seekers of the eternal is a name that i came up with back in 2017 when i started feeling like i wanted that i wanted more of a community vibe i wanted mm -hmm. a i wanted it to feel more like a movement than than just you know a, a guy sitting alone in his room drawing pictures or yeah. you know putting up artwork in galleries like a single person i wanted it to be more about us and uh, expanding our consciousness through art so um those messages that i have I, I really resonated with this in that way of being able to do more and more of what i want to do and then co-creating with the people who are um are really uh invested in the mission yeah, really well said. And then this one, just to this um, kind of piggybacks on uh, what we were bringing up before. He says, don't try to do it all as an artist. Find people that compliment you. If your gift is on the creative side, then find someone who can help you with the communication, the commercialization side of it. We don't have to be everything. The more we can build tribes and communities where your strengths back my weaknesses, uh, once there's trust and goodwill, I think the more we start building together with people with open hearts, open minds, and good faith, then the future is nearly infinite right now. And yeah, that's you know it's infinite powerful. right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's so powerful. It it speaks to the collective and the ability to to um to to lean on your community and you know focus on your strengths i think so so many of us get stopped in our tracks when we start weighing our weaknesses like oh man i could i could i could do that but i can't talk about it or i can't you know out, i can't do any kind of outreach or i don't like being in front of the camera or i can't write the copy that goes along with this like um we i i fall prey to that too as an author you know, um, I, I like behind, working behind the scenes and writing, doing the work and helping, you know, illustrations and art, um, and the text come together. But when it comes to marketing and promoting and sales, it's not something that I, I really am passionate about. And so sometimes just even that thought can be very debilitating. And, um, you know, you can sometimes get stuck and then you end up not releasing something that the world needs because you're focused too much on a weakness that somebody else doesn't, <laughs> doesn't have, that isn't a problem for somebody else that you just need to reach out and say, you know, help me or join. Mm -hmm. me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It empowers us to be able to, to be artists. And at, at this, on this, on the other hand, I guess of that, um, this, these new tools and these new technologies and the, the way that people want to interact with artists, it pushes us outside our comfort zones to try and do things that we wouldn't have done otherwise. And that too, correct. <laughs> you know, uh, it, it, if we think about, they say, artists that are highly respected now and their paintings go for millions of dollars, but died penniless and unknown when they were alive. That I think has a lot to do with it's, it's just, it, things don't change the same way now. You could be the most incredible painter, artist, musician, but you did. But if you didn't take the steps to uh, promote it or to be in the, uh, the public in some way, then that's what happens. Yeah later on they'll find your work and be like wow this is incredible who was this who was this unknown person yeah so i mean you can create in that way but it's uh, for me it's it's pushed me out i'm i i don't i enjoy it now but i before thinking about being in front of a camera or talking like like this on a regular basis or being on a panel in front of people on a stage all that stuff really scared me. And yeah. I, I just was, I was like someone, like you would say, I'd be like, well, I'm just not good at that. I'm introverted. I make the art. 
I, you know, and I think a lot of artists have that same, that same kind of uh, thought. So I think it's a twofold. It's about getting out of your comfort zone and trying new things and pushing yourself and yeah. finding out like, wow, like I really, I can enjoy this. And the more that, so the thing that helped me really was developing my meditation practice mm. and also becoming more, uh, more and more a genuine uh, version of myself uh, rather than you could, you can go either way. You can have like a really strong yeah, like ego, like a kayfabe, like wrestler, you know, like a wrestler, you're playing the heel, you're playing the face and you can have like a go-to character that you're doing. That's called kayfabe in wrestling. It's a great word because kayfabe. everybody's do, um, kayfabe. Okay. It's, I don't even, yeah, I don't know where that, if that's just a wrestling word. You know, I've only heard it in wrestling, but it's such a perfect word. I think we can learn a lot from it. It's kayfabe when, you, you know, like they would say, you know, a wrestler is in a, he's in an interview, he's cutting a promo, he's in kayfabe or like breaking kayfabe. That would be like when you're being, you know, yourself, John oh, Smith. Now I'm myself again. So I think a lot of people that have YouTube channels or uh, careers as artists, they're in kayfabe. Or if you're in a you're in a reality TV show, you're playing a version of the character and you're like amplifying that up. Uh, that's one way to do it is like really it's like you design an ego and you're sort of winking at the audience as you're playing this character. I, I think that's cool too, as long as you know you're doing it. <laughs> you know? True. And then there's another way of just of of becoming completely at peace with who you are and allowing your higher self to flow through you to become like a channel for something greater to flow through. And meditation practice for me has has allowed me to do that. It's it's helped me to. Uh, face and overcome a lot of demons that I've had a lot of self-doubt uh, a lot of worry about what people think of me uh, right being able to be at home in your own skin to be comfortable with silence <laughs> yeah. to be comfortable with saying the wrong thing or just taking chances and putting yourself out there it's so much comes with that but I feel that these practices and these tools of, of mindfulness and connection. I mean, for me, it's all the way to connection with the guru and, you know, tuning into the divine and trusting that is that's what's pushing me. And when every week we have this podcast to come talk, you know, just like last night, I was like, Jay, I don't, I don't quite know what we're going to talk about yet. Right. I know it'll come through. I, I know that the the right thing is, is, is there always, mm -hmm just waiting for us to relax to the point where we can receive the answer. And my teacher, uh, Swami Kriyananda, he says that intuition and calm feeling are the same thing. Mm. That when we're in a calm feeling, intuition is available. It's like a, the static of the radio receiver subsides and that intuition is available. So I know that whenever whenever I'm stuck or whenever I don't know what to do, what to say, if I can just get into a calm feeling, then I just trust that one, what comes out is uh, meant to be there. And that provides a lot of comfort and courage for me to do this. And I know, I, you know, I get a lot of facts wrong, dates wrong, names wrong, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. I know that's going to happen, but um, I'm at least comfortable with the the vibration that i'm delivering right <laughs> you know? I, I think you're absolutely right chris so there's twofold there there's you know you no man is an island right the theory that you know you, you can you can connect to this incredible space where there's other people that are willing and able to support you in ways that you may not necessarily have the ability or the willingness to to, to do it and then the other part is you know um it also expands the size of your comfort zone you know it, it's you don't have to click it to click that switch and do it all the next day but maybe it's a little bit by a little bit by a little bit and all of a sudden you start realizing that you know you are capable and you do have this ability and you just have to kind of practice and polish it and, and you'll get there um and then to be authentically yourself i think that was so well said chris like i think the one thing that i learned from being out in miami and watching you um interact with people it, you, you just 
authentically you. You just, um, you're not, you, you, you don't have to tell funny jokes. You don't have to speak too loudly. You don't have to you're just comfortable enough in your skin to make other people comfortable in theirs. And I think that's ultimately all it really is. And um, people respect you for it. And I think, you know, I, I worked with kids for 20 years. I always said to people, you know, um, working with kids is a lot harder than working with adults. Adults give you the benefit of the doubt. Usually, you know, you make a mistake, you stumble on your words, your energy is a little bit off, you're a little bit nervous. They can relate. I've been there before. I'm going to give this person a chance. <laughs> it's not like that. Like you, you know, if, if you're not engaging, if you're, if, if you, if they feel like something's off, they'll make sure that they, you, you do not have their attention. They'll let you know yeah. right away. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and they'll tell you, <laughs> if you ask them, they'll tell you why they're not yeah. listening or they're not interested or they don't like you. And, you know, it could, it literally it could be your breath and they'll tell you, you got bad breath and they won't, they won't, they won't pull any punches. Yeah. Um, so I think it is important to just um, to realize that nobody has this down, that the audience that you're speaking to have been there before. They are forgiving. Uh, they want you to succeed. Most people want you to succeed. Mm -hmm. Even if they don't say it out loud, they're rooting for you. Most people are just rooting for you because they want you to root for them when they try. And mm -hmm. um, so I do think that this is a really cool time for artists to get into a space where they can fully express themselves in all of their ways and even ways that you know, they didn't even think possible for themselves. Mm -hmm. And I mean, thank you for that. You're, I mean, you're amazing at it as well. I learned from watching you too, the way that you're able to uh, connect with people really quickly. And I know everybody that you had interactions with or recorded interviews with, and the way that I feel when you're, you know, asking me questions is this, this real genuine, like wanting to learn and wanting to, and respect and finding, uh, pulling out just like a, uh, music, you know, in music for uh, a producer that's working with a musician, you, that producer, you know, like Rick Ross or somebody like um, is pulling out um, the best from that artist. And just to get into, you know, getting people quickly comfortable and, you know, first time they met you, you know, there's lights and a camera on and a microphone, you can feel awkward. And if there's a weird energy, then you don't end up getting any good right uh, media from it are good gems out of them yes, they're just yes. like okay when is this going to be over right but immediately feeling comfortable and relaxed and and wanting to share and feeling that genuine connection so i, I noticed that that a lot and, and I, I really like that that's the, the the energy that we're putting out and yeah. you get it back from people immediately i noticed early on is like i, I was talking a lot about at the web three conference just noticing everybody's superpowers you know you you mm. you you know you meet somebody for a little while and you can kind of get a sense of like what your superpower True. is we all have them you know yeah we all have those uh, superpowers and it's about learning to find your true self that's beyond the the ego beyond the fears and all of that i i know for me one of my superpowers is i really can I don't know, like I, I really can feel the the plight of another human that I'm in front of and mm. I can really f I can feel their energy tangibly so if they're you know say in for me is you know maybe I'm an artist that they, that maybe they've been following for a bunch of years or if they're nervous to meet me but they wanted to come say hi or something like that um I, I can feel you, you, the way that you feel. So I want to, I want to immediately calm you down right? so that we can have like a good time together when, and you don't leave like, Oh man, I said that stupid thing. And he's like, you know, whatever. I, I want to just like, just calm us both down, you know, realize like, I'm not judging you. I don't like to judge people because I don't, I don't like judging myself. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever I'm judging somebody else, I feel terrible. Like I'm hurting myself when I, when I judge somebody else. Like, so um, yeah, just a little tangent there is everybody has superpowers. And then when you learn how to use your, your powers, before, when I just would feel other people's energy, I would I would uh, match it. I would um, mirror it. And so if you were nervous in front of me, I would be nervous back yeah. and you would feel weird and I would feel weird. <laughs> and then I yes. would just be like, all right, I don't like being around a lot of people. 
or, <laughs> you know, or I just want to be around like certain kinds of people in small groups. I, I don't really want to be in front of the public. And, you know, maybe I would just go back into my hole, you know, but if I learn to use that, it's more like what you say, we can, all right, now it's the opposite of that. Now the thing I thought was a curse is now the, the thing that I'm like the best at. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, so this is, This is a this is a follow up to um, after after we were talking about um, it's about artists not focusing so much on the technology and you know all of these confusing aspects of it. It's really about uh, focusing on the met the message and uh, what you're trying to create, and what what you're trying to do, and the story that you're trying to tell as an artist. Yeah. Um, he says um, that. Oh, okay, and then also. Um, not trying to do it all to find complementary people that can help you do it together and, you know, building these tribes and where my weaknesses are backed by your strengths. And that's so important to have. And I'm so happy to be on a team where we have these kind of things like yeah. say like uh, uh, Brendan going around and shooting people. I don't have that type of tenacity. I don't have that type of just like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to go ask. I'm gonna, and, yeah. Oh no, I'm going to go get this. Oh, no, he'll do it, whatever, you know, and then just, and because he believes in the project, because, you know, we're all, we all have these things that we're um, pulling off and, and doing, you know, it, so everybody has their, their unique thing that they're able to do. So I, I really appreciate it when I see somebody doing something, I don't know how to do. And, and he said here, this, I thought this quote was really cool. He said, I don't want failure of imagination to be the thing that limits us. And I see that so much as a challenge right now. Yeah. Yeah. Failure of imagination is what limits us. Yeah. Yeah. It just, you know, some, I can't remember if it was a video. I, was, I think it was a video. And they said, like, they asked somebody who's achieved a lot of great things. They said, you know, um, what do you fear? What's the worst advice or the best advice uh, you've ever given? And it was along those same lines, like, what you know, what if you're wrong? You know, what if those limiting beliefs are wrong? What if, you know, think of the possibilities? How how big and how wonderful that could this be? You know, and I just thought, man, that's such a great way to go through it. Like any self doubt that you may have about anything, ask yourself, what if you're wrong? You know, if you were going to limit yourself. What if you're wrong? You could be, you could miss out on, you know, all the things that you've ever dreamed of and more for yourself and everyone you cared about. That's, mm -hmm. that's what could happen if you're wrong. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And we, we come to this earth to, to not just sit around and, uh, you know, uh, die and do it all over again, just yeah. to get, get through it. Uh, we come here to take chances. We come here with, with real, uh, with real things that our soul wants to do, even even for those who get onto a deep spiritual path, like somebody like myself, who I, I've found I've found my lighthouse, I've found my path, I've found my 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 path to enlightenment, my tools, the techniques, my teachers. Like I have I have all of that, but I still have things that my soul wants to do in the world, and I have to do those. I still have karma to be an artist. So I'm an artist. I'm not uh, tucked away in an ashram where nobody sees me. Right. I'm supposed to be out here uh, sharing the things that I'm learning with people through whatever incarnation, whatever character that I am, the way this is the way that it looks. This is the way that it talks. This is all of the things that I was interested in and in heavy metal and skateboarding and surfing and tattoos and all of those kind of things that make me who I am yeah. gives me a particular flavor, personality, character that may attract other people to listen to this and then turn them on to expanded states of consciousness. And we're all doing that. We don't have to become cookie cutters of, of anyone. Uh, and yeah, that's to, to me, that's just, it's, it's just wonderful to, to use all of the, the things that we're given that the des desires that we have, we can overcome our selfish desires and our, um, our, 
our desires and aversions like i don't i like this i don't like that you can be inwardly calm and happy even if you have you know if we could get over all of our preferences then we would be completely just watching the movie so just so true. of life so true <laughs> get over your preferences yeah that's good that's a good quote <laughs> yeah that's a way yeah, that's why i like ayahuasca if you if you go on i that's why i love and hate ayahuasca <laughs> is you you the like an ayahuasca ceremony you're you're drinking this sludge that tastes terrible you know, as soon as you you know at, it has it has a diff, difficult it's difficult to drink and it, you know that it's going to cause you severe most of the time uh Ill, you're going to feel very like vomiting mm. uh, you're, you're going to be out in the elements for us we're out all night probably hot or probably very really cold uh, there's probably mosquitoes there's mm. probably someone next to you having a really hard time there's all of your taboos you, you know you may have like severe diarrhea wow and you just agree to all of that. You're just like, okay, I'm going to drink this medicine because I know it's, I know it's going to, it's actually healing medicine. You, you purge the things that are coming out of you are not necessarily the food that you ate. They'll just put it that way. Wow. It, it, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's this toxins. And, and, and I always imagine that I'm just eliminating things inside my body that are that are holding me back or, or it could be metaphysical even things that are holding me back or coming out into that pit but it it allows me to get over my desires and aversions and just to just to sit for eight hours outside in the cold while you're feeling sick and doing it on purpose wow. and then doing it over again the next day and going through in your mind facing some of the if you've got things to face if you've got shadows to work out if you've got demons that are holding you back you're going to face them and and overcome that by just staying calm and realizing that you came here to heal and that's what you're doing and so that's a, a metaphor for me of just like i love i love that because it trains me to get over uh, having preferences so if i'm just out and, and things don't go my way it's like well, it's not but not too bad i'm okay like i if, if we can just be inwardly calm sweet and happy mm. no matter what's happening it doesn't mean that you have to <laughs> you know you're not always just accepting you're not just being a pushover all the time but inwardly the things that you can't change the things that are happening if you can just uh, uh, enjoy them the same way that you would enjoy a movie that's got a lot of things going wrong in it right then that's for me that's the key that's that's the thing wow i think that's a whole new podcast on ayahuasca and the experiences that come from it i know we've talked about it in several different podcasts but i'd love to dedicate like a full podcast to you know the the journey that comes from you know plant medicine and um and psychedelics yeah maybe we could bring on one of the healers that i work with and talk about it a little more yeah. in depth that would be fun yeah. yeah it's a great that's a great practice it's a um, I, I can post a link to to the group that we work with too. They're actually now fully they're fully legal as, as a church, and oh, wow. they travel. So and the Titus from Colombia, they've been working on it um, for years now to be sanctioned as a sacrament. And so that's a beautiful thing. That's another great. That's a gr another great revolution that's happening uh, in uh, on the planet. Is yeah. that we're recognizing that these ancient medicines that have been with humanity for who knows how long that uh, these indigenous people in the forest have been working with these plants in order to, to elevate consciousness and to yeah. live harmoniously with each other and to, to live happy lives with no possessions, <laughs> that uh, we can learn to do that too and learn how to uh, make the world a better place and take care of, better care of our bodies and, uh, and of the planet and of each other. And, and that's happening with our, our medicine for, for therapy. So mental health is going to be improving vastly from this. Mm. So it's uh, the technology and the mental health all at the same time because we need it because that's what needs to happen for this this planet to continue going on 100 
humans need to heal. And yeah. so she's doing that for us. She's healing us through all these new ways that are becoming available. And same thing goes for the technology. I also wanted to say for, for artists who are listening to this, I'm not, I, I, I'm not like sitting here saying everybody needs to get into Web3 or you should create an right. NFT collection or saying that that's right for you or, or not. It, I just want to open, I just want to open the minds to what's, what's coming. I, 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 for whatever reason, and our group, we're keen on this. So we're interested in, in building during this time and, and using our imaginations to show what's possible and to inspire other artists. And maybe you see like what we're doing and you're like, oh, I could do something in my own way that, that you know, has those same principles. That's cool. I love that. That's great. I'm not saying that everybody needs to get in. So if you're, you know, if you're listening to this, you're like, oh, this is always just web three and I don't, I don't want to listen to this anymore. I'm just talking about the future of art here on planet earth in general you can start it's it's going in this direction where people want to have more connection with the artist that's yeah. making the artwork they want to have more expanded uh, outlets for what they're doing that you'd like to see an artist who if they do a painting we'd also like to see your artwork um, become animated we'd also like to see it maybe as a, a 3d figure we'd also like to see it maybe you run a maybe a short story gets written it's just about expanding what you do so you don't have to jump in or learn these technologies if you don't want to that was another thing we had to take away from the last ama that we did it was really in the same way that you don't push somebody to become interested in spiritual things. Right. You don't push them to become interested in technological things. I know for me, I, I wasn't interested in it for so many years when all my friends were telling me about it. So I'm not ever like pushing anybody to get into that. But I, what I, what I am saying is think about that. Think about what you're doing as an artist and just like Stark here said that it's about telling the story it's about discovering who you are and the message that you're that you're conveying and doing that more and more will prepare you for what's happening in the world i don't think we can get away with just putting pretty pictures on instagram anymore and hiding in the behind anonymity that's not going to work i know that because computers can can make four of them in in the time that true. you could go get a coffee. So, that is very true. <laughs> but it is it is too. I think with we embracing the the tools and the technologies, they're not going to go away. So fighting against it is is not going to help. So embracing and being comfortable with where things are going. It's always been scary when the camera came out, all the painters thought that they were going to become obsolete. When television came out, all the musicians thought that nobody was going to be listening to music anymore. Mm -hmm. It always feels like that when something new comes, it's just embrace it and, and expand our possibilities. Yeah. Think about, I, I was watching some videos on uh, AI art. And I just like to tune in and watch like tutorials about what's what's possible. And then I play around with it a little bit in mid journey. But seeing now that you, know, you, you could obviously everybody's been seeing all the profile pics and people doing uh, really quick, amazing uh, drawings of of their portraits. You, know, you can make a drawing of your portrait or you could type in and create a character through through the prompts. OK, you've got your 2D character and then in, you know, maybe a half an hour time using some other uh, prompts and technologies that character is now moving animated you can film yourself moving and then the character that you just created with prompts is now three-dimensionally yeah. em emulating that movement and now think about that moving into the metaverse of artists and teams building worlds in not a lot of time yeah. And these, it's just, I am, I'm just, it's just so exciting to think about all of the things that are coming. So I just want to embrace it and be a part of it and, and create for it. Yeah. And I think the one, the one thing to always remember, and, and, you know, Stark talked about this in the interview is it could be whatever you want it to be. You know, you can really use it, let your imagination guide you and use it in the ways that, you know, makes sense for you. And, you know, ignore, ignore the ways that don't speak to your heart or 
or or you feel like is is counterintuitive or goes against your nature you don't have to do that you know but there's, there's so many tools and resources that have been designed by human beings that can tear things down and build things up so where do you want to focus your energy and mm -hmm. focus it there mm -hmm. yeah well said and uh, last couple last couple ones here uh, I like this point. He said, I want to build a human blockchain where we have enough effective, compassionate, empathic humans, making sure that this tech is being created in ways that scale up the right value structures. Can't say it any better than that. You know, that's that to me is like one of the, you want that for every technology and, and, government system and uh you know you would you, you, your goal is to create um um a support system of human beings who who uphold all the things that make it right and just and it doesn't mean that people are always going to agree uh, in fact you don't wind up people to always agree honest differences are a healthy sign of growth but you want um humans th that are there that are trying genuinely to do the right thing and uphold the integrity of the tool that's being used Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's so important and and then the last thing here he said there's a spirituality that needs to be brought to this i feel a deep spiritual connection to other builders and people that are willing to step into the blue ocean and just fucking swim mm -hmm. it's hard it's painful it's difficult but it's exhilarating and breathtaking all at the same time yeah That's life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that falls right in with a lot of the messaging that, that we've been promoting with this project and with the images of Hanuman. It's, yeah, it's about discovering your true powers and you, and you won't discover what you're truly capable unless you do jump into the blue ocean and, and fucking swim. Yeah. See if you can swim. Yeah. If you, you'll never know if you don't try. And this, we're, our message here is, you know, that you are the hero in the, in the story of your life. And that when you play the role of the hero, that just like in the movies, miraculous things will happen for the hero you know you're watching the movie you're like oh that's totally unrealistic how did they run through all those bullets and not get hit by you know luke skywalker is just going through and all the lasers are flying around him no that could be you yes. when when you're when you're doing when you're the hero and you're you're taking chances and you're doing difficult things and you're you know you're making obviously good decisions you're not being reckless but when you're following your heart and when you're um, using competence and courage, then you will accomplish what you're set out to do. It may not go the way that you thought it was going to go, but you will have success in, you know, and, and see if I can remember this exactly. Um, one of my teachers at Ananda, the, the way that you measure success is by increasing your abilities, you know, so if if you if you've done something that financially failed for you but you've you've got increased abilities after that over is that a failure is that is that a win uh, increasing abilities and and there's another one in here that I'm forgetting but it's also about your your connection to the divine that when you try something and you realize that mighty forces come to your aid when you try something. You're like, wow, look how that, I mean, my brother and I talk about it over and over. It's just like, it, it just happens so many times that you, you don't, you know, we can just wink at each other about it because it's just like, well, you know, you notice, did you see that thing that happened and knew it was going to work out? And, and it, those are the things that bring true prosperity to us is when we try and and we we have increasing ability oh increase when we have increasing ability understanding you know we have more understanding about the nature of reality and our deeper connection to the divine that is all around us yeah. just realizing that we're not just alone in this world that 
there there really is a there really is one one giant consciousness that is uh, that we are a part of that we are and that we every time we take chances every time we um, make the right decisions we do the hard thing and not the easy thing then we are becoming more and more in tune with that consciousness and we're dropping the ego that's always trying to cut corners or prop ourselves up or make ourselves look good if we can truly tune into the harmony of the song that's playing in our lives and we become more and more in harmony with life and then we don't need to be afraid of life we don't need to be afraid of mother nature there's images of in india there's images of of kali i have some on my website to the um, images that i made of kali some of the images of kali she she looks ferocious she's got you know fangs and a and her tongue is sticking out and you know wide eyed and she's the she's got sometimes uh, skulls tied around her waist and blood uh, you know dripping from a sword and it's like oh, that's what is that is it, that's an image of the divine mother it's, she's worshiped <laughs> she's she's our mother uh, and then other times that you see you see images of kali the divine mother she's a serene peaceful harmonious loving mother mm. and it's this duality that exists so mother earth mother nature the universe that we live in she is our mother and she's sometimes terrifying <laughs> and sometimes beautiful and to me that is about those that that duality between the divine mother is 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 that we are supposed to tune into the goodness aspect of of our divine mother realize that she loves us that we're safe that we're protected that we don't need to be afraid and we're not supposed to be afraid of life we're not supposed to be afraid of the universe we came here on purpose like yogananda says um, from joy i came for joy i live Mm. in sacred joy i melt mm. that we were in joy before we came to earth we're supposed to be enjoying this life on earth and then when we pass and we leave this body back to joy we melt again it's always supposed to be like we're not supposed to be afraid of our mother we're not supposed to be afraid of the universe right. even though it looks scary and daunting we can when we're in harmony with her when we're going inwards and we're communicating with her then then all of life is our friend all people are our friend all situations are our friend because they're teaching us and helping us to learn and to grow mm. but if we're not in harmony we're not in connection if we're doing the things that are separating us more and more from that then there's nothing that she can do then you're on your own yeah <laughs> then you're then there's nobody nobody helping you you're just like okay yeah you do it on your own it's cool you can do that feel free you know she lets us she lets her kids go out and do whatever they right. want to do she's like you'll be back yeah prodigal son <laughs> returns yeah <laughs> yeah so i thought i would just end with um a little reading from yogananda and this is about i wanted to tie it into our message seekers of the eternal uh Stark Minds was talking about it is all about artists finding their message, finding their voice. What story are you trying to tell? And the thing that we handed out at the the Web3 Summit, our little giveaways were it was a little pack where you get, you know, the image, the image of Hanuman, and then our story on the back and some other images, and then this little coin that says. It says seekers of the eternal at the top, and it says the secret of prosperity is calmness, sweetness, and happiness. And this is this is a teaching from Yogananda about the way to, to the way to live. Uh, period. Uh, if you can stay calm, sweet, and happy no matter what's happening to you in life, then a you're already prosperous because what else could you want? And then B, you're going to attract to yourself abundance. You're going to attract to yourself the things that you need. You're going to see opportunities. 
And you can think about it as just plain, we're all in a video game. All the great sages are science. Everybody's telling us, like, are we in a simulation? Yes, we, <laughs> yeah, we are. It's called Maya, you know, in ancient India, it's called Maya. They would call it uh, Leela. You know, Maya just means illusion. We know that, you know, what we call matter, you know, matter is, is just vibrating energy. Mm -hmm. Once you zoom into it with the electron microscope, there's nothing really there. We are living in a, a multi-sensory, highly addictive virtual reality video game. That's just what's happening. And when Matt and I like to play a little game, it's like we're, you know, we're painting long on a mural and I just sometimes will be like, wow, Matt, this, this virtual reality space that we're in is so realistic. Look how the paint like just goes on the wall and you can see it like bubble up before it dries, you know, and the, the, the light reflection on this color, the way that I do it and I have to paint it like multiple times, like they really nailed it. You know, <laughs> if you can get into the space just for a second where you're looking at life in that way, where you're like yeah. really like appreciating like whoa, look at the way the light hits that or look mm -hmm. at the way that the designer really thought about all of these different things. So nice. Oh, and, oh, and then a breeze hits you right at the right moment. You're like, wow, this, this, this <laughs> simulation rules. You know, you don't need, it doesn't take much yeah, to get that into that mindset. Really, really interesting. You know, have you ever been on, um, I was at uh, Animal Kingdom a couple of years ago and they have an avatar ride. And you get to sit on this, like, it's almost, it almost looks like a motorcycle, but you're actually sitting on one of the, uh, what do they call them in Avatar? It's almost like a dragon. Do you know what I'm talking about? Those, mm -hmm. and you, you, you only have one and it, you know, you, you connect with that one and it connects with you for life. And anyway, so you, you sit on this, it's dark all around you. And all of a sudden the screen opens up and you can't see it's so dark. So you can't really tell who's beside you or not. And you, for a moment, for two minutes, you think that you're flying one of these, uh, these animals and uh, these, um, and you're in the avatar world and you're going like over waterfall, waterfalls and through the forest and the jungle. And, you know, all of these things are happening. They're spraying water off these like little contraptions. But for a moment there, you feel like you're in the movie and you're actually flying on one of these things. And you go through that moment exactly the way that you describe this real world. And then you get off the ride. You're like, man, that was amazing. It was scary. And it was sometimes really difficult. I could barely breathe because you dip down so far. You feel like you're actually going over the waterfall. It was exhilarating. It was beautiful. All these sights and sounds and such. I never thought about applying that same perspective to the way that I go through my life. Like, I'm, you know, I got off that two minute ride and felt like that was the best experience I've had. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you could essentially do that with everything we get. If this was a simulation, like yeah, it's pretty, you would pretty, just be like, whoa, wow, yeah, look, right. <laughs> like, oh, right. the texture on that is amazing. Here, yes. Yeah. That's and that's what, that's what um, psilocybin did for me. The first time I did psilocybin, you know, psilocybin um, mushrooms. I was just sitting in my room, just this is my normal room. And then all of a sudden I, lo I look up and I look at the light at the, you know, that's connected to the fan and just yeah. like, wow, <laughs> you know, you could just stare at that for an infinite amount of time. Look at the reflections on, on this. And it, I don't think any of the room changed. It was just um, my filters that said, this is just your room. It's boring. It's gloomy, you know, or whatever it's, you know, there's nothing, nothing exciting to see in here. You're just like, you tune out to that. But yeah, if I just do that right now and I, and I um, click into saying like, I'm in a virtual reality space right now. It's like, whoa, look at the detail on that bookshelf and all of that stuff. Like, <laughs> it's really fun so i and, encourage and people to do that and i just want you know and if you allow your mind you know your imagination you're, you're only limited by imagination expand that to the interactions you have with people not even just the things but imagine that even people you're experiencing them through this it's like you can touch them you can feel them you have this joy this love so i think about of course i think about my children and it's like these beautiful little you know spirits that just love you and 
dote over you, that want to hug and kiss and feel affection and they need you to say something to uplift them. And, you know, so you get to feel that, like imagine that experience if that was like a, a virtual experience, like that would be pretty amazing. And then think about your partner who you are, you know, who you love and you challenge and you admire and you, you have these levels of emotion and, and happiness and, um, and intimacy with. Imagine if that was a virtual experience, how mm. incredible that would feel. Um, you know, and if you and if you did that, you would never take them for granted. You know, mm -hmm. you would embrace every moment and you would be fully present so that you can feel all of the things that you could feel from this experience. And I think the one thing I think my wife reminds me all the time is to be fully present. She's like, if I could ask for anything of you, is to be fully present when you're with me. Don't worry about your business or your problems or your, you know, worries or your fears or all of those things are important. Um, but just be with me, like just mm -hmm. be with me, share it with me. And no, I don't want to know that your mind's off in a different place. Be here and share the experience with me. And if I could do that, mm -hmm. I'd make her a very happy woman. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, that's what it gives us a reason to practice. It gives yeah. us a reason to I train our minds because we're we can do that for other people we can uh give that it's like present you know they say it's like a, your present is presence is a present it's a gift to, yeah. to give to people so yeah i love what you're saying there expanding that to to people and it made me think also expanding that a bit further as you're Okay, so you're you're in your 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 natural environment, and you just click into that space where you you just saying this is a virtual reality space, and then and then you interact with another human. Say you and I are interacting right now. Yogananda says that God communicates to us through our friends. Mm. So if I approach you and I say, uh, "Okay." This is a way that God talks to me through good friends, through people that care about you, that people that want the best for you. If you get into a space Ooh. where you're seeing them as, uh, okay, God, talk to me, wow. give me some information, wow. then they'll do that because you make that available, then they match that energy. Yes. And then you can just say like, I'm talking to God right now. Yeah. And they say got, nice things. To you like, oh. that, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. That is the ultimate experience. To experience yeah. the infinite in the people that you meet. And especially through kids. Kids, uh, I think God can talk through kids really easily. So yeah. if you are like, God, I need I need some advice. I need you to tell me something. Maybe just go hang out with your kid and then expect, oh, man, expect that to happen. <laughs> Chris, th this is a whole new podcast now. This is That's beautiful. We should really dig into this on the next one. Mm. Yeah. yeah. How we can like experience that. the, you know, the infinite in the people that, Care, care, care most about us. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, the way that I st stay in it as much as possible is I use a mantra uh, called Japa when you do it all day. There's different ones that the, the one the one that could be great for is that the one that Hanuman is always chanting is Ram, 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 Ram. He knows that he's not actually doing anything. He knows that Ram, God is doing everything through him. So this is perfect. This is the, this is the virtual reality video game. As long as, as long as Hanuman is chanting Ram, 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 he's connected with God who's playing the video game through him. He can, he can steal the controller and start playing by himself if he wants to, but he knows that it's going to be very treacherous Right. If he does that, yes, he wants to do it the right way. He wants so he's constantly just chanting his mantra, Ram, 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 mm -hmm. and which is the most ancient word for God it, that is just has been timelessly. Uh, they say that uh, Ram left this earth, Krishna left this earth, Jesus Christ left this earth, Buddha left this earth, but the name remains. Mm -hmm. And by, and it doesn't matter if any of these awakened beings are here in the physical flesh or if they uh, have left the body, they, they, their presence remains. And if we chant these mantras, if we chant the name of Ram, 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 then we are just asking Ram to speak through us, to send us good thoughts, to act through us. And so say, um, say I'm out and, and I, 
I see someone and I make a judgment about them, you know, and we can't help it. Our minds are always just judging things, comparing things. You know, somebody says something that, that I don't like. I, it, usually if it triggers me, it's something like that I say, and I don't like it when I do it or something like mm. that. Or so whenever that comes up, if I'm making like a judgment about somebody or I'm thinking a negative thought or a dark thought comes in where I'm judging myself, I just um, put my uh, gaze uplifted at the spiritual eye. You can keep your eyes open. Just lift your gaze and chant Ram, Ram, Ram mentally, you know, and it'll put you back into that space of harmony. Then you can be back in the video game again. You can let you can let uh, your uh, you can become an avatar again in the video game and let God play your character again. For me, that's that works. And the, okay. I've been practicing it for a long time, just like trying to more and more of the day, just chanting Ram, Ram, Ram. When you're in a space where you are feeling unproductive or lazy, I'm sitting on the couch. I don't want to get up. I don't want to go work on my books. I don't want to go, you know, jump into the discord to connect with people. I don't, I just, I almost start to isolate. How do you get out of that space? Mm. when i'm feeling when i'm feeling like sort of antisocial antisocial maybe unproductive um lazy even um you can almost feel like you steal the controller and you just put it down and you don't mm -hmm. you don't do anything and then you wake up the next day and you're like my goodness like i let people down i, I you know they were expecting me to get this done they expected me to be more involved um i could have added value i could have made some progress but none of that happened because i chose to just sit on the couch and, and stare at TV. Mm. So I think, so two things like first, after you've done that, after you, after you, you know, you're the Lotus, it's, it's growing out of the mud, but that day you just like, fuck it. I'm just going back into the mud. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have all this infinite potential. I could be receiving the light of the sun. I could be living my dreams, but man, I'm just today, fuck everything. I'm just going to be lazy and I'm going to yeah. do the things that I know are not helpful for me. I'm going to make some poor decisions, you know, maybe, yeah, just whatever you do, any vices or whatever you do yeah. and you just wasted some time and you knew it's not going to leave you fulfilled, but you just, you know, you're feeling tired and you just like that. And that happens, you know, it's like happens to everybody. First, don't beat yourself up for it. A uh, thing that Yogananda says, it says, give all of your weaknesses to God. He likes that. Blame him. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> you can say like this is your movie i'm your character you're doing everything i'm not doing any of uh, it anyway you did it i want to do better next time will you please you know next time make me a character that is a, more decent in your movie give me a better wow. role and ask for that you know I, it's like apparently I, I i i and also see it as like oh i thought i was strong but apparently i do have i still have some weaknesses there's some things that really get me what were the factors that that led to that what was my diet like that day what was uh, what kind of things did i consume what kind of music did i listen to what kind of people were i was i around and then you can see like oh yeah of course that happened to me I had all of these things because that's all it is. It's ever, it's always just the synchronicities lining up. Yes. And one thing to leads to the next to the next. And, and now you're drunk looking at porn all day on a Saturday <laughs> when you could have done right. something valuable with your time. Uh, so yeah, I think that's what it is. And so, yeah, don't, don't beat yourself up about it. Just say like, God, what, look what you did why did you do that to me? I want, I, that's not me. That's not what I'm aiming at. And being mm -hmm. gentle, it's just, just like when you're in a meditation and you catch your mind drifting. The idea is not to be mad at yourself for drifting and then spend your time like frustrated of like, why can't I do this? I suck at this. I'm so yeah. terrible. It's just like, no, just notice and return. Just notice, notice return. return. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can calmly notice, return, and giggle at yourself. Like, oh, look, yeah, I still got some work to do. Look at that. Yeah. I like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And so, yeah, to end, this is this is in, in tandem with this idea of the coin. Um, when I heard, when I first heard this teaching, I was like, 
like what we were talking about earlier, a lot of these things that come in, you really enjoy them and then you forget immediately. Yeah. Maybe you heard a lot of cool things on this podcast. You turn it off, you go back to your work. You're like, what was that about? I have yeah. no idea. Yes. <laughs> All the time. Yeah. So this coin for me was a way I wanted something that I could keep in my pocket to remind me of this truth and that I could share with other people that I know are, are um, interested in this wavelength of, okay, we're in this virtual reality video game. The only, the only rule in the Seekers of the Eternal video game is to stay calm, sweet, and happy no matter what happens in the game. And if you continue, the more that you do that throughout the day, your points... <laughs> you know, your happiness level, you know, maybe it's the character. It's just like a, it's a, it's a bliss, bliss level on the character. It's like going up or down, you know? So right, every right, time right. you get, <laughs> every time you make a good choice, you know, your bliss level is, is moving up or down. Every right. time you judge somebody, it's going down or you're thinking negatively about yourself or you get angry, your bliss level shrinks down yeah. and then you just hold on to the coin and you're like, Oh, okay. Oh, it was supposed to be calm, sweet, and happy. Shit. Right. All right. Start again. And then in the same way, <laughs> just notice and return. Notice. So somebody cuts you off on the interstate and almost kills you and you just are enraged and feel completely justified and pulling up to them and swerving and yelling at them and honking or whatever you want to do. And you're like, Shh. you know, that can feel really good in the moment. You can in feel like, yeah, like this, I'm totally justified. What an asshole. You should get off your phone. But yeah, are you on your phone sometimes? Are you not paying attention sometimes? Did you have a bad day and you missed an exit or something like yeah. that? And you do it, you definitely do it. <laughs> and yes. so yes. in that moment, if you could have that and you're like, okay, all right. No, the idea is to stay calm, you know, rub the coin instead of, you know, pulling up and yelling at somebody, just be like, all right calm back down, calm back down. It's okay. <laughs> and then you will. And you'll be like, man, I'm so glad I didn't do that. That would have caused more problems in my day. Right. So this is the, this is that teaching from Yogananda from a book called how to have courage, calmness, and confidence. He says, how can you obtain poise? If it is difficult to earn money, it is much more difficult to obtain poise. Make a triangle, and on one side write sweetness, on the other side write calmness, and at the base write happiness. People have two kinds of natures, the private nature and the public nature. The private nature is when they relax and allow themselves to express ugliness. Many people dress up and go out, but inside, passions are ragings. Inside the house, they say, I am angry. Outside, they say, oh, how are you? We must have unity in mind, speech, and body. Be calm in speech and in mind. Attain calmness. Attain peace. Attain happiness. Attain poise. Every night before going to bed, say, I am the prince of peace on the throne of poise. Poise is your center. Whether you act quickly or slowly, you will never lose your kingly attitude of peace. Yeah. That's definitely one book that everyone should have on their nightstand. Mm. Yeah. Chris, thank you so much for another wonderful podcast. So many gems on this one. I mean, there's like start to finish. We, we had... This incredible Michael Stark sharing some incredible insight for, for us through our interview uh, with him in Miami. And then, uh, yeah, Chris, thank you so much for all of those uh, incredible um, snippets of, 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 of wisdom and pearls that you've gained throughout your life to share with us. So it was great. Like, I can't wait to jump off this podcast, run downstairs and talk to my wife about the, the simulation, the idea of, of this is a simulation. I think that's going to be a big one. And um yeah, everybody try that out. It's it's fun to do this yeah. little little switch. And Michael Stark, thank you for the inspiration yeah. for this. I didn't know what we were going to talk about today and listened to that interview with you and Jay like a bunch of times yesterday. And it kept slow, you know, what oh, let me hear that again. Like, wow, this is really great. So please go and, and watch that interview. We'll be and also too the in the in the the Soak Media channel, 
has all of the interviews. We'll put yeah. that into a playlist so you can go through and hear all we'll those put from the link Miami. For the interview directly to this um, to this podcast as well as his bio, so that you guys can dig in because. Like we said, he's a, he's a really great guy. And I think we're actually going to be having him on the podcast as well. He's agreed to come on our podcast if we agree to go on his. So, cool. you know, you'll be seeing more of Michael Stark. Yeah. And tonight we're going to, so if you're hearing this, it's already recorded. So tonight we're, we're doing a Twitter spaces with uh, visionary artist, Chris Dyer. I'm really yeah. excited for that tonight. So go find that on our Twitter. If you're hearing this now and listen to the recording, that's going to be a, that's going to be a really great one. So yeah, yeah tune into that. All right. Well, Chris, I wish you nothing but love and blessings for you for the rest of the day. And I'll see you tonight. Mm -hmm. Blessings, brother. Blessings, Blessings, everyone. See you next time.